Thank you very much. Uh, in the back of you, uh, Mr. Timmermans. Um, good evening. Uh, and thank you very much for your introduction and your, your inspiring uh, presentation on the Green Deal. Uh, but, but still, I would really like to focus a bit more on the climate law, what we can expect next year. Because next year is the year where we need to deliver. Because it's the last year before we can get into the official start of Paris. And you already said that it's, you would not be surprised if it will be, from the analysis coming out, minus 55%. But can you now at least now make very clear that we are not going to do a two-track approach? Because that's still in your written answers a bit unclear, where you say, well, we might do first 50% and later on 55%, which will not, never fit in that year. You say, well, we need analysis. But to be very honest, there's a lot of analysis out there done by the Commission saying that Europe is on track already for minus 46%. If we look at all the coal phase out that are in plants, we are already at minus 50%. So all the analysis that is there already tells you that 50% is business as usual. So that means you can already say here that it will be minus 55% when you come up forward with your climate law proposal next year. Can we just seal that off so that we have that clarity? Um. Bus is bus. Great. Uh, really great question. Look, my position is this. I would agree with you when you say we wouldn't have the time to have two different approaches. But I also hold before you that going from 45 to 50 to 55, especially from 50 to 55, that is, then you will be asking some really tough extra measures to be taken. And you can't fault the Commission for wanting to analyze that and to analyze the feasibility of that. Uh, that's what we're going to do. Uh, and that's also what Ursula von der Leyen said uh, before this Parliament. And in that context, I, I reiterate, for me what is important is that as EU we have a position that has a meaning internationally and that makes us the leaders in this. And for that, I would say we need to be ready before the Glasgow uh, COP meeting uh, uh, the latter part of next year. So that would be my trajectory. Um, uh, but um, uh, I think I've been very clear, uh, and I repeat that, that I would find it extremely surprising if we would come to any other conclusion than that we need this minus 55%. But I, w I think this will be more convincing if we can show what this actually means uh, by analyzing that. And we have the time to do that, and we will do that thoroughly. Thank you for that. I will we'll not push you then further on the 2030, but I will push you further on the climate law, because you will come forward with that in the first 100 days. Until now, I only heard an explicit one on climate neutrality, but to be very honest, the current commission already has agreed to that. So what, I, what can we expect further into the climate law in the first 100 days? And I will give you a couple of proposals, because that's already analyzed by the commission in its uh, long-term strategy. All new cars put on the EU market are zero emissions by 2040 at the latest. Comes from the Commission analysis itself. Emissions from international shipping will be reduced by at least 88% by 2050. And emissions from aviation must be cut by 55% by 2050. Are these kind of proposals that we can expect in the climate law so that we are also ensuring that the transport sector is now finally going to make a move and can we also see, hopefully, that the responsibility remains with DG Climate for that, because it makes a lot of ETS efforts needed? Um, first of all, let me be uh, very clear. Uh, we will have to take additional measures in many sectors, including the maritime sector and the aviation sector, but we might, I don't know, we might come back to that later. Secondly, it is something I will have to study. How much can you put into the climate law? I, I want to take a bit of time, to because on the one hand, you don't want it to be an empty shell just saying 2050 climate neutral, that's it. On the other hand, it's also a question how much room to maneuver you give to different member states to sh choose the right mix on the basis of their national plans to attain that goal and how much you want to put into the law. And that is the process we're going to get into uh, right now, and, and the signals you're giving are very clear, and that helps us uh, uh, also in this uh, process. But I want to come before the Parliament with a draft uh, climate law that goes as far as we can in terms of stipulating exactly not just where we need to be in 2050, but also what we need to do in intermediate steps to get there by 2050. 